Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This video is all about retraining and a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Stay tuned. All right, so as promised, retraining 101 and in corp, right? So first term airman and in corp. So let's go ahead and get to it. So we're going to talk about retraining program purpose, disqualifying factors, the FTA retraining process, in corp, customer facts, and retraining advisory and advisory notes, and the AFECD, better known as the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. So the entire purpose of retraining, it's a force management program for the entire Air Force, right? So as people get out of the Air Force for whatever reason, um, there becomes all of these shortages in these career fields that need to be filled, right? So let's say you're a first-term airman, you're in a career field, your recruiter uh, says, hey, go in open general, it's an awesome idea, right? Said no one ever. And then you do that, and then next thing you know, you are a maintainer somewhere whenever you're really supposed to be in finance. This happens a lot. And then you have the ability at your um, midway throughout your career, you know, whether your first term airman's at your 35th month or six year, or I'm sorry, if you're a four year enlistee, it's at your 35th month. If you're a six year enlistee, it's at your 59, 59th month. So it's important to know what your, what your window is so that we can, pr you can plan accordingly to retrain, right? Cause there's some things you're going to want to look at long before your window opens up to even see what you want to do if you want to stay in the Air Force. So disqualifying factors, you can't have an OSI investigation, can't have a referral EPR, not on top, right? Um, does not possess local network access. So basically what this means is you can't even log on to a computer, right? So, and you can't have, you got to have a current passing physical fitness score. C3626, table 4.1 for all of this stuff that we just talked about. First term airmen, this is designed to retrain in conjunction with a reenlistment. It also allows an opportunity to pursue another career path. One thing they don't really mention here, though, is uh, retraining in conjunction with a BOP. Like what? So did you know that you can retrain in conjunction with a BOP, right? So keep in mind that everybody wants to go to California. Everybody wants to go to Florida and all these other cool places, right? So whenever you're trying to retrain, a BOP is kind of last on priority of the Air Force's uh, we need people there requirement. So talk to your local career assistance advisor for more information on BOPs. So for your enlistee, you got to apply, apply between your 35th and 43rd month. Six years is 59th through your 67th. And then OCONUS is a lot different. So airmen applying for retraining nine to 15 months prior to DROS. So they've actually just came up with a program, like just happened, to where you can actually extend your DROS out to meet a retraining window. So it's not nearly as complicated as what it used to be to be able to retrain whenever, say, you're in Turkey or Korea or, you know, England or any one of those places overseas. Talk to your career assistance advisor about this. So what do they look at, right? So the number one thing is your most recent EPR rating. And then two, current grade, three, projected, four, next two EPR ratings, five, DOR, TAFMs, aptitude qualification exam and your AFSC preferences. It's kind of funny like the what you want to do is very last, right? So, this is important to know that if you're in the military and you haven't done a very good job, you know, when you're trying to retrain and uh in, especially into a competitive position, uh it's rack and stack, right? They're going to look at your ratings on your EPRs and if you basically get beat out by other people because you didn't uh, maybe care or try or maybe even weren't even set up properly with with a good mentor right now is the time if it's before your window to find all of that to do a good job to think outside of the box to innovate and most importantly really just have a good attitude because without that everything else is going to be very very hard for you to do so that's really at first term airman in a nutshell, you know, I will cover real quick uh, and it, we cover on this a little bit, but be very, very familiar with the online retraining advisory. You can find that on my PERS. Just search for online retraining advisory. It's that simple. And that is basically going to show you all of the positions that are open and it's broken down by objective in and objective out more to come. Right. 
So basically the point here is to find out what the Air Force needs and bump that up to, against what's called the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. And then the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory, this guy right here, is a list of every single AFSC in the United States Air Force. So when you're on the online retraining advisory, this guy right here, and you're like, what the heck is all of these, this one alpha, one, two alpha, three delta, What what is all of this, right? This AFECD, Air Force Enlisted Classification Director, is going to tell you exactly what it is, the job description of what you'd be doing on the daily, and not to mention what it requires to get into that position. So let's say, for example, your security forces. No, I, I just lied. Let's say that you are maintenance and you didn't look at the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory. So when you're on the retraining advisory, you're like, oh, cool. This one's got a lot of positions. Just click apply, 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 not knowing what any of these are. And the next thing you know, you get retrained into, I'm not going to name drop any AFSCs because they're all great. Let's just say it's one you don't want to do. That would be really bad. Okay, in court. So this is designed as the exact same reason as first term airmen, and it's in three phases. Phase one, volunteer. Phase two, all the volunteers weren't, you know, let's say on the on the objective out, right? There's way too many people. And let's say that out of all of these doing air quotes here, way too many people didn't volunteer to get out of that career field. So the Air Force comes in and says, whoa, 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 you guys have way too many people, right? So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to mandatory retrain you into something that the Air Force needs most, but, however, but, comma, I will give you up to five positions that you qualify for. So that goes back to, well, I hope my ASVAB scores are good because I'll tell you, personally, mine you know, or like 12 and 13, I barely made it into POL. So if I got mandatory retrained, good Lord, my options are, I don't know, I guess window liquor somewhere, you know, and, but the thing you got to remember is that you can study for your ASVAB. You can go to the library, get you a big book, go online, study the ASVAB, and you can retake this at the education office to bump your scores up. Uh, if you are in that mandatory retraining uh, window if your career field is part of that, make sure that you bump your ASVAB scores up if you haven't done so already. And then phase three is just open. It's open season. Basically, after all of the phase one, phase two is done, you get all of these positions um, in the objective in that still need help so you can apply to do that. Big difference between first term airmen and career airmen in corp, right? is that your first-term airmen don't have to really ask permission to retrain. So when you are a first-term airman and you want to retrain, you literally just do what I was just talking about. You go to the retraining advisory and, and you bump that up against the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory and you go back to MIPERS and you click Submit. Awesome. Done. In court, not going to happen, right? In corp, what I mean by that is when you're looking on the online retraining advisory, you have staff sergeant, tech sergeant, master sergeant. Those are your career airman positions, not first term airman. Remember, first term airman, everything in that column goes from E1 to E6. Some people make tech in six years. It's a real thing. So those are the positions that your first termers have to look at and the other ones are the positions that your career airmen or incorp have to look at moving on so customer responsibilities holy smokes look at here everything that you need to know is online in my purse or epubs does it take a little work yes it does but is it your career yes it is so what you'll want to do is take responsibility for that Right, so go to MIPERS, go to retraining down here, online retraining advisory, and read some of these other things too. Learn what the disqualified airman retraining program is. You know, um, that's a totally different beast in and of itself that does not apply to any of you guys unless you wash out of tech school or if you wash out of your training at your first base. And then you're like, what the heck is an exception to policy? You know, when can I use one of those? What is first-term airman, first-term 
first term applying for retraining while requesting for a CJR or in court. Everything you need to know is right here. Now, like I've said in other videos, it comes down to interpretation, and that's where your supervisor and career assistance advisor come in very, very handy because they're going to tell you that interpretation. Here is the online retraining advisory. So like I was talking about before, you have your objective ins and you've got your objective outs. So what happens? Every single year you get career field managers. These are the people that are at the very, very, very top of their career field. Chief master sergeants, usually chief master sergeants, not all of them. Um, and they're basically saying, here is how many people I need. So objective in, I need this many for my career field. And then there's other ones that are saying, I have way too many people. I need to get rid of this many people, right? And as you'll notice, not hardly anything in the objective out under too many people, right? But there are quite a few people under the staff sergeant um, calling specifically and a few in master sergeant, or I'm sorry, tech sergeant. And, and you know, you'll have your onesies and twosies as master sergeants. So like I was talking about before, when you're brand new to the retraining process, you're a first-term airman, you're within your window, your only column is this right here coming straight down. Now, when you're a career airman, it's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Do keep in mind that if you're a career airman and you're trying to retrain, uh, do it as a staff sergeant if you possibly can because as a tech it gets really, really hard. And as a master sergeant, you can almost forget about it. Very, very hard to do. I'll tell a, another cool feature about the online retraining advisory is that you can literally click on these little notes. I can't do it here because this is a slideshow. But if I clicked on that in my purse, it would actually highlight what that advisory note is. I could also come over here to 1 Alpha 111 or any of these career fields, click on it. It's going to tell me what it is right? But that's the cheaty way. That's the quick and easy way. You want to go the hard way because anything that sucks builds character and you learn, you grow from it, right? So pull up the Air Force Enlisted Classification Directory and control F, search for any and all of these AFSCs to see what they actually are for an in-depth review. Advisory and quota is just more of the advisory. So I will say one last thing about the advisory is that this is your go-to, right? These your real numbers. If you, if you hear something about Airman Johnny whatever over in 1 Alpha 211 that says, hey, I got a position over here, blah, 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 just forget about it. If it's not on here, right, don't worry about it. If it is on here, then start asking lots of questions because this is your one-stop shop. The advisory notes I was talking about, if you click on it, it will actually say this. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're clicking on these two, as you'll see one, like this one, for example, 1N211 alpha, that's a shred. Um, so rule of thumb is that you cannot cross train from a regular career field into a career field uh, that's a shred out. Think of security forces, for example. They have dog handlers. <clears throat> and me as POL... Well, career assistance advisor now, but me as POL, I couldn't just retrain into security forces and be a dog handler without first applying for security forces and then going in to be a dog handler. Just talk to your career assistance advisor. Okay, so this is the enlisted classification directory. This is what lists every single AFSC in the Air Force. It can be found on MIPERS via a search at the top. Look at the current version. And then you can really start to see how this breaks everything down. So in-flight refueling. This is, I think, the very first one in here. So um, specialty summary. That's what it is. Duties and responsibilities is what you're going to be doing. And then you've got specialty qualifications. So if you're trying to retrain into one of these positions, you really need to pay attention to this down here because it's going to tell you what you need to do to, to be qualified for that career field. Same thing. I think this is a different AFSC, right? But 
when you click the apply for retraining on MyPERS, basically what MyPERS is going to do, well, MyPERS is just a system. It sends an email over to the retraining team per se, and then they say, okay, cool. You can retrain. You're eligible for five out of five positions you applied for, or you are eligible for two out of the five positions you are eligible for, and they're going to bump what you need to do up to the Air Force Enlist Classification Directory to make sure that you do all the requirements um, to get into that position. And this is the point where you really should be talking to your career assistance advisor, right? Because there's going to be so many weird things that you have to do um, that are across the entire wing that you've probably never heard of. So basically print your checklist out, take it to the career assistance advisor or supervisor, and then have them tell you what each one of these things are so that way you can contact the right people and get it done. So this is ASVAB Polhees. So every time you retrain, you have to go to flight medicine and you have to request a new 422. And when I say you have to go to flight medicine, what you really have to do is go to IMR where you find your shot records, right? And when you look at the very top of IMR, you're going to have some different icons um, and you can click on each one of those. And one of those is going to say uh, something along the lines of request a new medical assessment. You have to have a 422 anytime you retrain, anytime you PCS, et cetera, so on and so forth to make sure that your medical uh, capabilities align with what the Air Force needs to do that retrain or PCS. Okay, so now let's talk about POLHES. So what is POLHES? What does that acronym even stand for? What are all these numbers and letters? POLHES stands for Physical Profile Serial Chart. Once again, that's Physical Profile Serial Chart, right? So that first one under G is your aptitude, right? And then, so your ASVAB, et cetera, so on and so forth. So X, what's that? I'm sure you've heard of the, of the, the term X factor, right? So you have to go to the gym. You got to pick up weights to see how much you can do to qualify for job X, Y, Z. And there's a chart over here um, that talks about each specific weight requirement for that position. Or it doesn't talk, it shows, right? So uh, let's say you need to go to MPS. I can't imagine why somebody at MPS would need a X factor of K for 70 pounds, um, but you get the point, right? And then you have P-U-L-H-E-S. And these are just different numbers that define your psychological, mental, and physical, whatever, like type health to, to basically fit into a career field. Okay, so let's say it's time. You're ready to make that, uh, you're ready to make the plunge. You've talked to your supervisor, you've talked to your career assistance advisor. All you do is go to MyPERS, you click apply for retraining. So once you click apply for retraining, what's going to happen is that, you know, within maybe two, three days, maybe a week sometimes, the retraining team is going to look at your package and they're going to send you what you're eligible for back, just like we had talked about. And you can learn anything and everything about NCORP on all of these PSDMs. Uh, so retainability, though, you got to get obtainability within 30 days if you've been picked up. Um, one thing to remember, though, is that when you do get your retainability is that you're going to have to extend two years from the class grad date. Air Force is going to get you. It's trying to it's trying to keep its personnel in place so that way it can balance the force. This is also additional retainability may be required on the AFSC course, depending you know on how long um, your course is for your for your AFSC that you're trying to go into. If you want to learn about a course, you can go to ETCA, which is E T C A. Just go to Air Force Portal and type in E T C A. ETCA is going to pull up and it's going to tell you everything about that course. Sometimes what they'll need, though, is the course code, but there are ways that you can go through ETCA and filter all that stuff out. So gaining CFM is final approval authority for retainability discrepancies, right? And this is really for NCORP, you know, as the slide states, right? So like we had talked about, retraining is the primary means to advertise. And just know that this is a living document. It refreshes every single day, so those numbers will go down. Um, it populates every August, um, usually every August of every year, after all the career field managers have gotten together, this list will populate and we'll have all of these new numbers of all of these new 
requirements, right? And then those numbers throughout the year will start to go down and down and down and down. So you want to be on top of your game and retrain as early as you possibly can so you have the best chances of picking up the career field you want. The incidents and messages. This is such an important place, right? After you've applied for retraining, you're going to have a little spot up here now, right? And it's going to say incidents and it's going to say your retraining application. You have to, have to, have to go in here every 30 days and update your case, right? Because if this goes without any update or or you have not gone around and, and gotten all the documentation that you need signed and that goes longer than 60 days, your case is probably going to be closed and you just lost a good shot at a position you at a career field you could have gotten, right? So go in here every 30 days, set a calendar reminder and just say, hey, I'm working on 422. They say it's going to be on this date. I'm working on X Factor. I'm working on whatever it may be. And with that, not really going to be any questions because this is just going to be a video. But if you do, you can always leave them in the, in, in the comments section below. And anyone and everyone is always more than welcome to come check out Ellsworth Career Assistance Advisor. And I'm reachable 24-7, 365. I do sleep at night. So if you do send a message at 2 o'clock in the morning, you just have to wait until the morning. And I promise you I'll get right back to you. But I appreciate it, guys, and have an awesome day.